सो होप यू आर विथ मी सो फार वी हैव डिस्कस सम वेरी सिंपल कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू रिमाइंडर्स लॉट ऑफ दीज आर रिकैप ऑफ डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी हैव डन अर्लियर नाउ वी विल गो टू सम कोर कॉन्सेप्ट वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थियोरम्स ओके बट बिफोर वी लुक एट थियोरम द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज साइक्लिसिटी If you remember, we discussed cyclicity with regard to finding the last digit of a number, also last two digits. Interestingly, cyclicity is there in remainders also, and we can use this concept to find remainders when my dividend and divisor normally are single digit numbers. Okay, so you will see what to apply where. Now that is important because I am going to give you four or five methods. What to apply where is important. So normally, because cyclicity, see, for example, if my divisor is Seven, as in this case, your maximum remainder can be six. So between zero to six, you can have remainder. Okay, that means it will your remainder will repeat after five six times, which is fine. But if your divisor is twenty, then your remainder can be anything from one to nineteen. So nineteen is too long a cyclicity. So normally we confine this cyclicity to problems where my divisor is a single digit. and my dividend also is a single digit number raised to any power so it can be raised to any power but it should be single digit otherwise even finding cyclicity would be tough because unlike your last digit cyclicity this cyclicity you can't remember because it depends upon dividend as well as divisor so it's a pair so you'll have to find it on the spot so i don't expect you to remember this but for small numbers we can calculate it for example i have shown here for power of 2 divided by 7 so basically when i say cyclicity is when a number is raised to a power is divided the remainder follows a pattern as the power is increased this method however can be only used for small divisors so let's say 2 to the power 75 divided by 7 this is the question so i'll start with 2 divided by 7 i start with 2 to the power 1 divided by 7 my remainder is 2 and understand here also there is a shortcut 2 to the power 1 divided by 7 my remainder is 2 2 square divided by 7 my remainder is 4 2 cube divided by 7 8 8 divided by 7 my remainder is 1 2 to the power 4 divided by 7 now you don't have to divide 2 to the power 4 i told you earlier that dividend can be replaced by the remainder so what was your remainder in the previous case 1 just multiply that 1 with 2 okay so 1 multiplied with 2 2 divided by 7 will again give you 2 that's good enough Okay, next case two to the power five. So you don't have to do thirty-two. Just do what was the remainder in the previous case two? Two into two, four. Four divided by seven will give you four. Okay, then two to the power six by seven. Don't do two to the power six. Just four into two is eight. Eight divided by seven is one. So you can see that two four one repeats. So you have two four one, two four one, and so on. Hence. Two to the power n divided by seven has a cyclicity of three. The cyclicity is three. That means I uh, I can check the power is of the type three n plus one, three n plus two, or three n. If it is of the type three n plus one, my remainder will be the first one, which is two. if it is of the type 3n plus 2 my remainder will be 4 and if it is of the type 3n my remainder will be 1 my power is 75 75 is of the type 3n so my answer is going to be 1 okay as simple as that very simple method but will not work for large numbers okay so let's understand again through a question so we have 5 some power of 5 raised to 9 so both these are single digits i can apply cyclicity okay How do I calculate? Five to the power one by nine is five. Five to the power two by nine. So again, don't do five to the power two. Just do five into five. So that is same, but it will get simpler as we move along. So five into five is twenty-five. Twenty-five divided by nine is seven. Then five cube by nine. Don't do five cube. Do seven into five. Seven into five is thirty-five. Thirty-five divided by nine is eight. Okay. Then five to the power four. Don't do five to the power four. You do eight into five, forty. Forty divided by nine is four. Okay. Then five to the power five. Five to the power five by nine. Don't do five to the power five. Four into five, twenty. Twenty divided by nine is two. Okay. Then five to the power six. 
5 to the power 6 by 9 again don't do do 2 into 5 10 10 divided by 9 is 1 and the moment you get 1 remember that the pattern will start okay so you can stop here or if you want you can check further just to be sure so 5 to the power 7 by 9 is again 1 into 5 5 5 by 9 is 5 you can see that this pattern has started so for this case you get remainders of 5 7 8 4 2 and 1 so the cyclicity 6 so this you will get when your power is 6k plus 1 6k plus 2 6k plus 3 6k plus 4 6k plus 5 and 6k okay so these are the remainders so we have 1001 1001 when you divide by 6 you will have 1 then you will have 40 so 6 36 then you will have 41 is again 6 okay 36 so this is your quotient and the remainder is going to be 5 now the remainder is 5 that means the number is of the type 6k plus 5 hence your answer would be 2 right so this is a very simple method cyclicity the most basic method to calculate but provided your dividend and divisor are small numbers preferably single digits okay so i hope we are clear with this first method of cyclicity though we discussed a lot of methods earlier also but they were more formula based so binomial and a to the power n minus b to the power n a to the power n plus b to the power n hcf and lcm modules all those are basic concepts which also we use but now we are coming to the core formulas of finding remainder and the first is cyclicity okay fine the second and one of the most important theorems is remainder theorem so remainder theorem says and understand this very carefully when a polynomial px is divided by a binomial p minus a then the remainder obtained is pa okay so it might sound complicated let me simplify this for you so we have p to the power x divided by p minus a when such a thing happens the remainder is basically p of a so in that polynomial you substitute x with a okay this is what is your remainder theorem let me take a couple of examples to explain this and you then you will see it's very simple for example 17 to the power 25 is divided by 16 okay so your polynomial is this 17 to the power 25 is your polynomial okay now in this p minus a our attempt always is to get this a equal to 1 plus 1 or minus 1 that is what we should always try because that is when it gets simplified and you get the answer straight away if a is anything else then it does not make sense so we always try to get this a as 1 so and here it is directly 1 you can see so 17 to the power 25 upon 17 minus 1 okay so you can see that this 17 and this 17 minus 1 this is what forms the required format that we have a polynomial in terms of x okay so 17 has to has been raised to the power 25 is getting divided by something which is 17 minus 1 so this is your p this is a this is your p and this is your x this is the function the function is p has been raised to the power 25 okay so i hope you have understood the format so func your 17 has been raised to the power 25 and is getting divided again by 17 minus 1 so a is equal to 1 here so the remainder is same polynomial but x is replaced by a okay so x is 17 17 gets replaced by 1 1 to the power 25 is your remainder or your remainder is 1 okay so understand this part clearly polynomial in terms of x so this 25th power that i am raising that is what is the polynomial and your x is 25 your x is 25 here 
So this x gets replaced by a. Okay, let's take one more example. 17 to the part. Let me raise this. 17 to the power 25 is getting divided by 18. Okay, so your polynomial is raised to the power 25, x is equal to 17. Okay, so what I should do is basically, again I want in terms of 17 plus minus 1. So, 18 can be written as 17 minus minus 1. It will always be x minus a, remember, it will always be divided by x minus a, but a itself can be positive or negative. Okay, you can't have p plus a, the divisor has to be p minus a always. So, 17 minus minus 1 and this is 17 to the power 25. This is of the remainder theorem format and when it is of the remainder theorem format, your remainder is a. a in this case, remember, is minus 1. So, minus 1 to the power 25. So, remainder is minus 1 to the power 25, which is minus 1. So, you can see the concept of negative remainder comes here as well. And when your remainder is negative, you add the divisor to it. Your divisor was 18. So, your answer is going to be 17. So, this is what is remainder theorem. Very simple. In case it can be applied. It cannot be applied in all cases. But we will, I will show you methods where you will be able to apply it in lot of cases. Okay. And clearly you can see your divisor is 16 and 18, too large to apply cyclicity. This can be done by cyclicity also, but divisor is too large and your dividend also is not a single digit, but a double digit number. So that is where it will get complicated and hence cyclicity is not advisable. Remainder theorem works best. Let's look at cases now where and how we can manipulate remainder theorem to do more questions. This obviously was very simple, 17 and 16. 17 and 18. So, you can see that it is plus minus 1. The moment it is plus minus 1, it's no brainer that you will apply remainder theorem. But when it is not, for example, this one, 8 to the power 275 and 15, it is not plus minus 1. Okay. So, now some thinking is required. 8 to the power 275 divided by 15. First thing that you should always do when you look at the dividend is reduce the dividend to its prime form, prime factor form. So, 8 is a power of 2, right? So, let's reduce it to 2. So, this will change to 2 cube to the power 275 by 15 or 2 to the power 275 into 3, that is 825 by 15. Okay. Now, if you think a bit, there is a power of 2 which is 16 and your denominator is 15. 16 and 15 have that plus minus 1 connection. So, if I can change my dividend to 16, then it comes in the binomial, in the remainder theorem format. How do I change it to 16? By changing it to 2 to the power 4. If I change it to 2 to the power 4, it can get multiplied with 824 you can have. So, that is 206, right? 206 into 4 will be 824. 1, 2 will be left extra, which I can keep out and divided by 15, right? This format I can do. And this format, if you now see carefully, this part is remainder theorem. Second part 2 divided by 15, of course, the remainder will be 2 that I can do separately. Okay. So, let's solve this part. So, 16 to the power 206 upon 16 minus 1. This is exactly remainder theorem and you know that your remainder is going to be 1 to the power 206 or 1. So, this part will give you a remainder of 1 applying remainder theorem. And the second part is 2 is getting divided by 15. So, 2 divided by 15 will give you a remainder of 2. Since the dividends are getting multiplied, the remainders also will get multiplied and your final remainder is going to be 2. Okay. So, on the face of it, this did not look like remainder theorem, but you can see how easily and nicely remainder theorem can be applied here. 
okay so just think a bit remainder theorem actually can be applied in lot more cases than you think okay and then we can solve this this also could have been done by cyclicity because your divisor is uh, 15 large but still okay and your dividend is a single digit 8 okay but that cyclicity could have been long so this obviously you can see that we get the answer in one shot let's look at one more problem 27 to the power 153 divided by 40 now this looks very unlikely that this can be solved by remainder theorem right 27 and 40 unlikely but that is where i told you that remainder theorem can be applied in more cases than you can think first what did i tell you please always convert your dividend to the lowest prime factor factor okay so 27 obviously is a power of 3 so 27 to the power 153 upon 40 i'll convert this to 3 to the power 3 to the power 153 upon 40 which is 3 to the power 459 by 40 so this is the first thing that you should always do because this will give you more options okay now no power of 3 comes close to 40 plus minus 1 right 3 to the power 3 is 27 and 3 to the power 4 is 81 it does not come anywhere close to uh, 40 and i want that plus minus 1 range only so you can see but now there is a modification or extension of remainder theorem where i say okay no power of 3 comes close to 40 but there is there any power of 3 which comes close to a multiple of 40 not 40 but a multiple of 40 so 40 ka second multiple is 80 40 ka third multiple is 120 then 160 then 200 so if you see 3 ke power let's look at powers of 3 3 to the power 1 is 3 3 square is 9 3 cube is 27 3 to the power 4 is 81 and so on and multiples of 40 is 40 80 120 and you see 80 and you see 81 that is exactly what i wanted so you can see that there is a difference of one so these are powers of three and these are multiples of 40. okay so if my divisor was 80 then this would work so what i will do to make the divisor 80 is i will multiply the dividend and the divisor by 2 okay i'll multiply this and there's an adjustment for this we'll have to do later i'll tell you but right now let's multiply the dividend and the divisor by 2 okay and understand very carefully yeah? so watch me very carefully listen very attentively so you have 2 into 3 to the power 459 as the dividend now and 80 as the divisor now okay so 81 is 3 to the power 4 right so my dividend should be converted to 3 to the power 4 so 2 into 3 to the power 4 now 459 i can have 456 which will be 1 110 114 114 into 4 will give you 456 3 cube will be extra so 3 cube will be out so i'll have this upon 80 okay and on this part i can apply remainder theorem right okay so applying remainder theorem you have 2 into 3 cube by 80 this i'll solve separately okay and then i have 81 to the power 114 upon 81 minus 1 so when i apply remainder theorem on this you can see that your p minus a a is equal to 1 so 1 to the power 114 is going to be 1 so the remainder of this part is going to be 1 that is the beauty of remainder theorem 
That's why I say that P minus A, A should always be equal to plus 1 or minus 1 because your remainder should be 1 to the power something or minus 1 to the power something. Otherwise, it does not make sense. Okay. Now, let's focus on this part. This is 3 cube. 3 cube is 27 into 254. 54 divided by 80. My remainder is going to be 54. Okay. So, remainder is 54 of this part, remainder is 1 of this part and because both the parts were getting multiplied, my remainders also will get multiplied, 54 into 1, my remainder will be 54. Okay, but 54 is not the answer. One thing you will have to be very, very careful of, what did we do initially to the dividend and the divisor? We multiplied them by 2. So, your answer will get divided by 2, your final answer will be 27. Okay, so this is the answer. 27 will be the final answer. Okay, now a lot of people get confused here. A lot of people say since we have divided both, since you have multiplied both of them by 2, why should we divide? Remember, this is not a fraction. Though it looks like in a fraction format, multiplying numerator and denominator by 2 has no impact. This is not a fraction. These are actually dividends and divisors. Okay, just to give you an example, if 5 is divided by 4, you get remainder of 1. You multiply both dividend and divisor by 2. In that case, you divide 10 by 8. Your remainder is 2. You can see that your remainder has doubled. Though you have doubled dividend as well as divisor, your remainder also has doubled. So, whatever operation you perform, same operation happens. So, to get back the original remainder, you must divide this by 2. Okay, so 54 will get divided by 2. So remember this, you can do this adjustment and through this adjustment now so many different questions now can be solved because powers of 3 and multiples of 40, somewhere they will come in plus minus 1 range. Though I normally advise you not to go beyond 4th or 5th multiple, don't check beyond that. If you get something till there, well and good, otherwise we'll use some other method. Okay, so check till 4th or 5th multiple. Okay, but remember that in the end, Whatever you have multiplied them with, you must divide that with, okay, to get your final answer. So, we have looked at cyclicity, we have looked at remainder theorem, okay. Now, let's look at a modification of this remainder theorem, which is called Chinese remainder theorem. I don't know why it is called Chinese remainder theorem, but uh, something where we use one of our LCM models, okay, uh, to find this. Remember, sometime back we discussed that if my dividends are getting added, subtracted or multiplied, then my rem I can do the calculation separately and my remainders also will get added, subtracted or multiplied. That is on dividends. We have not discussed anything on divisors. What if my divisors are getting multiplied? Only multiplied, not added, subtracted. But what if my divisors are getting multiplied? And this again becomes very, very useful. Look at this question. 1, 2, 2, 6 is divided by 45. Okay. 1, 2, 2, 6 is divided by 45. I normally divide, I get a remainder of 11. Okay. What I can do is 1, 2, 2, 6 upon 45. I divide this, I get 11. Instead of this, can I do 1, 2, 2, 6? 45 is 5 into 9. Can I divide it by 5 separately and 9 separately? 5 and by 9. And then what happens? Okay, then what happens is where the Chinese remainder theorem comes. It's not as simple as the dividend where you do the same operation. Slightly more complicated but a very useful concept. Okay, so understand what happens here. So, let's divide 1, 2, 2, 6 by 5. When you divide 1, 2, 2, 6 by 5, okay, for 5, you know the rule. You look at the last digit. Last digit is 6. 6 divided by 5 will give you a remainder of 1. Okay. And when you divide 1, 2, 2, 6 by 9, for 9 also you know the rule. It is the sum of the digits. And sum of the digits you can see 6 plus 2, 8 plus 2, 10 plus 1, 11. 11 divided by 9. Your remainder will be 2. Okay. So this gives you remainder of 1. And this gives you remainder of 2. Fine till here. After this, we use LCM model 3 concept, okay, which is what was your divisor? 5. 
quotient i don't know so from the first one your dividend will be of the type 5x plus 1 and from the second one your divisor is 9 remainder is 2 so it will be of your dividend will be of the type 9y plus 2 i equate them okay because the dividend obviously is same okay so 5x plus 1 is equal to 9y plus 2 or 5x 5x minus 1 is equal to 9y x and y are integers and you check for the smallest possible value of x and y which satisfies this you can see that if x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1 this gets satisfied okay so put x equal to 2 or y is equal to 1 here so if i put x equal to 2 i get 11 if i put y is equal to 1 then also i get 11 so my remainder is going to be 11 which is the same answer that i got here okay so very useful concept and the for, for the first time we have split the divisor we have not split the divisor so far we only had split the dividend okay but you can split the divisor also we have split into two parts you can split into th three parts also in lc model 3 we had done three parts also and you can combine it later like this so combining is slightly more complicated but still uh, not very difficult to do if you look at the previous question in fact 40 so if you wanted 40 could have been done as 4 into 10 you could have solved separately for 4 and you could have solved separately for 10 then your divisor becomes small then you can use cyclicity maybe okay because it, now it is only 4 and 10 4 your remainder can be maximum 1 2 3 so very powerful tool which can be used in certain questions okay for example let's look at this one 2 to the power 40 is divided by 77 so 77 large lot of uh, uh, remainders possible but what if i divide 77 into 7 into 11 then i can do it from cyclicity as well okay but let's do it using what we have here which is the chinese remainder theorem so i'll do 2 to the power 40 divided by 7 and i'll do 2 to the power 40 divided by 11 okay fine so take a chinese remainder theorem only tells you how to split the divisors but then still you have to do your division so how do i do my division if you see the first part you can clearly see that a power of 2 uh, is 8 and your divisor is 8 minus 1 so i can apply my remainder theorem in the second part 2 to the power 40 upon 11 now there also you can see that a power of 2 is 32 and your denominator can be 33 so there also i can apply the modified remainder theorem so i can do this through remainder and modified remainder theorem i can also do this through cyclicity 2 to power upon 7 is fine but 2 to power upon 11 may give me slightly longer okay so let's do remainder theorem first part i'll convert this to 2 cube so 2 cube to the power 13 into 2 upon 2 cube minus 1 okay this is my first one and for the second one i'll multiply this by 3 okay so this will change to 3 into 2 to the power 5 to the power 8 upon 33 which is 2 to the power 5 minus minus 1 fine so this part is remainder theorem which gives me remainder of 1 okay and 2 upon 7 gives me remainder of 2 so final remainder is 2 of this part okay this part again is remainder theorem where i get minus 1 minus 1 to the power 8 is 1 and then 3 upon 33 gives me 3 so 3 into 1 i get remainder of 3 okay so very simple but i hope you remember this step that because this has got multiplied with 3 it will get divided by 3 so the remainder will be 1 for the second case okay so we have solved till here 
now using what we had discussed 7 is the divisor 2 is the remainder so 7x plus 2 is equal to 11 is the divisor 11y plus 1 1 right so that is what you get here now x is equal to 1 will not satisfy x equal to 2 will not satisfy x is equal to 3 is 21 plus 223 no x is equal to 4 no x is equal to 5 no x is equal to 6 what will satisfy yes x is equal to 6 will give you 42 plus 244 no it will be 11y plus 1 x is equal to 6 also x1 is 9 2 is 14 16 3 is uh, 21 plus 2 23 ha, 23 will satisfy so x is equal to 3 will give you 23 and y is equal to 2 will give you 22 plus 1 which is again 23 so any of these values are fine so if you put x equal to 3 you will get 23 y is equal to 2 you will again get 23 so your remainder is going to be 23 okay so that is what is your remainder fine so this is how this question will be solved and this is where we have used the remainder theorem we have used the modified remainder theorem and we have used the chinese remainder theorem so we use all but very very important concept to understand this okay great let's move on we have now this number up to 36 digits is getting divided by 36 so if you see the pattern we have 1 then we have 1 2 then we have 1 2 3 then we have 1 2 3 4 then we have 1 2 3 4 5 okay so it's all series of natural numbers i have one natural number then i have two natural numbers then i have three natural numbers then four natural numbers then five natural numbers okay uh, so these are the number of digits so this should be up to how much so that i get 36 digits okay so 36 is equal to uh, just by hit and trial and this you should remember also that sum of 10 natural numbers summation of 10 natural numbers is 55 sum of 9 natural numbers is 45 okay and sum of 8 natural numbers is 45 minus 9 which is 36 okay so 36 is sum of 8 natural numbers okay that means this will go till so i'll have 1 i'll have 1 2 i'll have 1 2 3 i'll have 1 2 3 4 this will go on till 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this will be the last set okay fine so this is the first thing this is my number it's a continuous number now this is getting divided by 36 36 means 4 into 6 so i'll apply the rule for 4 and i'll apply the rule for 6 and then i'll apply my chinese remainder theorem to combine them so for the rule for 4 sorry 4 into 9 so for the rule for 4 you just have to check the last two digits and last two digits you see are 78 78 divided by 4 will give you remainder of 2 so in case of 4 my remainder is going to be 2 in case of 9 it is sum of the digits and sum of the digits you will have to be careful here how do i calculate you have one set two set three sets four sets this is the eighth set right first set second set third set fourth set you have eight sets now one is going to appear in all the sets so one is going to appear eight times two will appear from the second to the eighth set that means two is going to appear seven times three will be from third to eighth so three is going to appear six times four is going to appear five times five is going to appear four times six is going to appear three times seven is going to appear two times and eight will appear only in the last set so it will appear so this is the sum of the digits based on the frequency okay or so this one method of calculating or you can say the first set has one so the total is one second is one plus two so three then one two three six one two three four that is ten ten plus five fifteen 
फिफ्टीन प्लस सिक्स ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी वन प्लस सेवन ट्वेंटी एट एंड ट्वेंटी एट प्लस एट थर्टी सिक्स सो आई कैन एड दिस ऑल्सो दिस ऑल्सो विल बी माई सम ऑफ डिजिट्स सो बोथ वेज आर फाइन यू लुक एट द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ डिजिट्स और यू लुक एट द सम ऑफ ईच ऑफ द एट पार्ट्स तो दिस विल गिव यू एट प्लस फोर्टीन प्लस एटीन प्लस ट्वेंटी प्लस ट्वेंटी प्लस एटीन प्लस फोर्टीन प्लस एट सो एट प्लस फोर्टीन इज ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी टू प्लस एटीन इज फोर्टी फिफ्टी सिक्सटी सेवेंटी एटी नाइन्टी नाइन्टी एट हंड्रेड एंड एट हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी आई गेट वन ट्वेंटी वट डू आई गेट हियर वन प्लस थ्री इज फोर फोर प्लस सिक्स इज टेन ट्वेंटी थर्टी थर्टी फाइव फोर्टी फाइव फिफ्टी फाइव फिफ्टी सिक्स सिक्सटी सिक्स सेवेंटी सिक्स एटी फोर एटी फोर प्लस थर्टी सिक्स इज वन ट्वेंटी सो दिस ऑल्सो गिवस मी वन ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी डिवाइडेड बाई नाइन is how much 9 and 39 uh, then 30 27 you get remainder of 3 so this gives you remainder of 3 okay so when divided by 4 my remainder is 2 so it it is 4x plus 2 when divided by 9 my remainder is 3 so it is 9y plus 3 okay so if i put x as 1 you get 6 if you take x as 2 you get 10 if you take x as 3 you get 14 if you take x as 4 you get 18 if you take x as 5 you get 22 if you take x as 6 you get 26 if you take x as 7 you get th uh, too long let's see once again x as 1 you get 6 okay not possible x as 2 you get 10 no x as 3 you get 14 No. X as four, you get sixteen plus two eighteen. No. X as five, you get twenty two. Here you get eighteen plus three twenty one. No. X as six, six twenty four plus two twenty six twenty six. No, you get it now. X as seven, you get seven into four twenty eight plus two thirty. Yes, you get thirty here. And Y is equal to three. You get twenty-seven plus three thirty here also. So thirty x is equal to seven or y is equal to three is a valid combination that I put in this equation. So I get thirty. Hence the remainder is thirty. So this again is a good question where we have applied the Chinese remainder theorem. Now Chinese remainder theorem word should not confuse you. I don't know where that came from, but basically it means that we can split the divisor and very useful and very powerful because if a divisor is large, you can split it into smaller parts and get the answer accordingly. So use it wherever required, and then you can get your answer.